Welcome to Kit Catastrophe. My name is Kit, and today we'll be taking a look at Transformers Siege Deluxe Class Autobot Ratchet. This figure came out in 2019 as a Walgreens exclusive and is a heavy retool of Transformers Siege Deluxe Class Ironhide. Fittingly for both his character and a Walgreens exclusive in general, Ratchet transforms into an ambulance, this time in the now familiar Siege Cybertronian lens. It is still very much a breadbox van like his brother-in-arms Ironhide, cast in a splendid white. Ratchet doesn't have much in the way of dedicated paintwork for this mode, but makes up for it with at least 200 cc's of sculpted detail running all along the ambulance. What little paint was allotted went to some red accents along the top and sides, though there doesn't appear to be any coherent pattern to any of it. Above Ratchet's brilliant translucent blue windshield is a light bar, painted entirely red. I would have liked to see some blue up there instead, if nothing else except to break up the red. Now, even when saddled up next to Ironhide, it may be hard to really see just how much has changed in this remold. The most obvious parts are the front bumper and what will become the robot mode shoulders, since those are the most prominent. But, looking more closely, we can see that even more remolding was done, at least for the sculpted detailing. In vehicle mode, this is evident on the entire top section, the sculpt is actually asymmetrical on Ratchet, the wraparound panels on the rear, and even the wheels themselves. Ratchet's tires look far more rugged, as if he has to be ready to traverse tough terrain to save his patients. The plastic used to make up the wheels is made of this grayish off-white plastic that feels absolutely dreadful, cheap, and somewhat brittle. I'd almost take Apeface's milky nylon polymer over this. Almost. I have more to say about this plastic, but that'll come soon enough. Strangely, Ratchet is advertised as having a third mode, a repair bay. Don't be fooled, this was never truly engineered into the figure, and was more so eked out of the existing joints as a cheeky bonus or added play feature. Basically, you just take the vehicle mode and make it look almost, but not quite humanoid, and you lay it back down on all four wheels. This quote-unquote mode is finished off by Ratchet's accessories. The first is the RT-15 Protraction Magno Hoist, whose armature is made of the same brittle gray plastic as the wheels. I say brittle because on the very first day out of the package, the friction joint at its base cracked and is barely holding on as it is. Fortunately, it hasn't gotten worse since I have became more careful as to where I place my pressure while removing and manipulating the joints. Always hold this joint together when you move it, no matter what. But the fact that it nearly broke the day I got it from simply trying to rotate the peg in its socket is pathetic. The other accessory to complete this mode is the RT-5 Laser Scalpel, which is cast in the same white plastic as Ratchet and is therefore fine. Now, this repair bay mode is something of a reference to the original G1 Ratchet Toys accessory sled. Much like the G1 Ratchet figure itself, this mode is really poorly thought out and not really worth all the time I put into talking about it. It's so great that it's completely ignorable. After carefully removing the accessories, Ratchet is but a hop, skip, and a jump away from his true bipedal form. While Ratchet has many mold changes from Ironhide, none of these affect the transformation. If you already own Ironhide, you know how to work Ratchet. It's sometimes amazing just how much a figure can change through a simple coat of paint. While Ironhide looked like a bulky bruiser, Ratchet, while still remaining stocky, takes an air of a gentle giant. At least, that's my impression. He's like Sweet from Atlantis The Lost Empire, except he probably doesn't have such a baritone. As far as the paintwork goes, Ratchet's red accents form a more coherent design in this mode than they did in vehicle mode. There are these proto-SS runes on his shoulders that are supposed to be evocative of the verboten red cross symbol, but they don't really work. What does work is that head sculpt. It's based on Ratchet's appearance in the Generation 1 cartoon, and the helmet is far more naturally shaped than Ironhide's ovoid forehead. I'm also a sucker for helmet crests. In Ratchet's case, it's a permanent angry unibrow. Switching out Ratchet's toolbox forms the RT-15 Protraction Laser Launcher, which pegs into the hole on Ratchet's back and resembles his original missile launcher from Generation 1. It kind of looks dumb hanging over his head, so I like to take the laser itself off and put it in his hand. That leaves his other hand to take up the RT-5 Magno Wrench. I thought he was a doctor, not an engineer. You know, after all of those Energon figure reviews, I think it's pretty nice coming back to Siege. 
Oh, how I've missed all these joints. Starting at the head, he has a ball-jointed neck, which can turn 360 degrees, and it can nod a little bit, but not very much. And it can wobble side to side a little, but also not very much. It's very much limited by the rim of this helmet. But at least he can look in all directions, so that's good. At the shoulders, they have a swivel that go all the way around, forward and backwards, and they do go more than all the way outwards, which is pretty good. He has a bicep swivel that goes all the way around. He has an elbow that goes more than 90 degrees. All in all, so far, this is pretty good. And now, oh, how I've missed waist swivels. Oh, oh I miss, I, I, I missed a good waist joint. After all this time, when was the last figure I reviewed that had a waist joint? Review number 98. <coughs> At the hips, they go forward and they go backwards pretty well. Nothing gets in the way. And they can go all the way outwards for the ultimate high kick. He's turned himself into an I-beam. That's pretty nice. And at the knee, he can kick back more than 90 degrees, but only slightly. It's only slightly more than 90 degrees. And finally at the foot, he has a very nice standing base with some very nice ankle pivots, which means he can hold just about any pose. Out of all of the Siege exclusives, Ratchet is the most unique by far. He features a ton of extra tooling and has a really nice color scheme. He would have had some good accessories if not for that god-awful light gray plastic. However, the only reason it's still intact is because I was treating it extra carefully just for the sake of this review. But other than that issue, which really dampened my experience with him, Ratchet's something of a treat. They could have just put out an Ironhide with a new head and called it a day, something which they'd actually do for a future review subject, funnily enough. But I appreciate the extra effort put in to differentiate the two perennial repaint twins. If you find him for a good price, I'd say he's worth the pickup. It's worth saying that out of the two, I don't exactly prefer one over the other, so I'll give Ratchet the same rank I would have given Ironhide. Lovely. If you liked this video or otherwise found it helpful, please leave a like, share this video, and subscribe. For my next review, I'll be taking a look at another exclusive, Transformers Siege Deluxe Class Blue Streak. This has been Kit Catastrophe. Transform and roll out.